call the meeting to order. Um, it's the regular meeting, 10 a.m., 970 Embarcadero Del Mar, April 22nd, May 22nd. Um, I'm going to call the roll. Call the rolls. Uh, Director Brandt? Here. Director Thurlow? Here. Director Geis? Here. Uh, do we have any me minutes of meetings to approve? No, I have a backlog of those. Yeah, um, okay. There are still draft minutes, um, gotcha. and I plan on bringing them to the next meeting. Okay, my bad. So nobody's here for public comment. Um, any directors have public comment? Anything not on the agenda? No, I think they have no. Okay. Uh, so the first is consider a request for proposals for a general manager approve and return to the board of directors for final approval prior to its release um, discuss and consider a proposal to seek an individual to assist the district as i put on here acting i struck that on most of the drafts a general manager and provide assistance to the district during its startup over the first year this position will be contract as an independent contractor and not as an employee Review a draft independent contractor agreement, including scope of work. Discuss a process for selecting a general manager. So here was my thought. I kind of put my thoughts by doing what you did, Spencer. Mm -hmm. I took a, a actually a contractor on payroll um, agreement that the county had, and I kind of just took it into its pieces and put down what I thought mm -hmm. and substituted the district but mm -hmm. I guess what's un important is the scope of services part that's right and here's one of the things I was thinking is I think we need to get this really right I'd like to see us take things completed and make sure we review it carefully before we forward it to the board mm -hmm. so we don't get that rebound that happened with me not looking at that agreement carefully about from the auditor so maybe we could start by going over this this scope of work agreement and let me just tell you my thought behind it i was looking at another agreement that we had um, when i was with the auditor at the county where we had an independent contractor work for us and the agreement was more hands off from management mm -hmm. and we actually solicited from the individual well, what are you going to do for us? What are you, well, you're, you're supposed to be the expert about being a general manager or we hired an accountant. Mm -hmm. And can you, what are you going to bring to us? So why don't you propose to us what you're going to do? And then we go, we could comment on that and say, yeah, what about this? But you kind of come to an agreement by reversing it. Instead mm -hmm. of us telling them what to do, to avoid that, you say, well, we want a general manager to assist us. What is it you could do for us? And then we get we get some solicitations from somebody, and then they they maybe submit a scope of work, mm -hmm. and we approve that scope of work as a general agreement. But they're kind of bringing their expertise. That, mm -hmm. That's what my thought process okay. was. I don't know what you guys think. So about as that. opposed to the other thing that I've been thinking out, which was the opposite of that, which is that we would draft some sort of a strategic plan, basically like an inventory of things that we needed to get done and it'd be a, a public document, and then the contractor could ostensibly just work their way down this list of things in any order they wanted to. I, I think that I think that could work too. Uh -huh. It's just where you don't want to get to is to say, well, you should attend every meeting. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. we want to say, hey, if there's important things on the meeting, it'd be nice for you to come and assist us. Yeah. You know, if we want that person to come be the clerk of the board, uh -huh. in the absence of someone else being able to clerk of the board, could, yeah. you, could we have you be the clerk of the board? And so those are the kinds of things that, that you either can reverse through it, have that mm -hmm. person have the vision to come help us, or we can do this strategic plan, or we could do both. We have a strategic plan and they, and they submit to us their work effort. So okay. anyways, what do you, uh, you know? Why, well, from my perspective, one of the important things to do is to define what the scope of services are, because I think that that's where we're gonna have, I think this is obviously where there's gonna be the most discussion at the board level. And so I think that the arrangement where the, the contractor would like give us advice and ideas about 
you know, when we say, what are you going to do this week? And they say, well, here's the things that I yeah. want to do. Um, I think that in there's a universe where that would work, but I just hearing about it right now, I don't know. I feel kind of wishy-washy on it, I guess. Yeah. So you want to get a general scope of services of what the general manager, a normal general manager would do. Well, a normal contracted general manager, yeah. yes. So you're talking about a scope of services, but what I'm hearing you say is that the next step that we as a board need to do is to outline our work plan, mm -hmm. our policy plan, or, you know, for the next six to nine, 12 months, put that in place mm -hmm. first and then solicit well, what I'm saying, general manager. More, more so what I was saying was that the duties of the general manager need to be outlined and they need to be, or the, um, the services that we are soliciting from someone need to be outlined. Because if this is going to go out, if there's going to be a job description that goes out, we're going to need to have these things delineated. The challenge is what I see is you want, you want to keep this an independent contractor. Yeah. And if it's an independent contractor... So, so when we brought this other agreement from the Silver Creek, mm -hmm. I think when we say prepare all necessary work product necessary for regular and special board meetings, administer financial aspects of the JAD, oversee the JAD field activities, maintain archives and records, miscellaneous GAD. I think, if, I think those are okay if they're broad, but if they get into this detail of telling them how to do it, mm -hmm. then you form that you're directing the work of the employee. Mm -hmm. Even though some of these are relevant, like it would be nice if the general manager participated in managing the financial aspects of the GSD, whether instead of a director making a deposit, the, mm -hmm. the general mm -hmm. manager could make the deposit, initiate transfers in FIN and have the board approve those things. So mm -hmm. I think defining that scope of service in a really broad way is okay. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, this the legal counsel, someone, Trindle, has proposed to us how to be the general manager and here's my contract, here's how I would do it. And so you kind of want that same agreement with the other side of the party to the transaction, mm -hmm. how would they handle the duties of a general manager, yeah. meaning they should understand what that general manager normally does in an organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. And so the concern, just to outline and make sure that we're all on the same page, the concern with the, the, the GHAD contract was that it was too broad or that it was too specific? It was too specific. Too specific, okay. Because, because you get in there and say, the board of directors will tell them to do this, and you're really saying in an independent contractor relationship, yeah. it's like general legal counsel, well, they're the damn expert. They're gonna tell us. They're gonna tell yeah. us how to be general legal counsel right. rather yeah. than we're us telling them. Which them. Code, yeah, 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 we're not gonna exactly. tell them which code to. But here's my concern, and then, and then I'll drop it, and that is, I think you need a pretty sophisticated board of directors to have a, a contractor general manager. And, and by that I mean they have to really understand their role, which is not to tell the guy to do individual things. Right. And I don't see that this board, not, no knock on this board, but it's very, very hard for even sophisticated boards to be able to handle you know, their guy, but you're not gonna tell him what to do. Right. So and, that, that's, and that's, what I was, that's what I was trying to make clear in the contract. When the board enters into this agreement with this person, mm -hmm. that's right. especially in a pro bono relationship, you know, they, they got to work with that, that general manager and the general managers to help the board along and to give them advice. But a general manager knows, needs to know when to step back and count votes, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> But I think the tendency of, of, of a board like this is going to be at every single meeting to have come up with stuff that he needs to do or she needs to do. Yeah, and I think I think Spencer's idea about a general strategic plan or a general description of the job is 
probably appropriate to put into the contract. This is our expectation. We also have that expectation we're asking this person to do it for free. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. With no expectations of yeah. future compensation. Yeah, well, right. and one of the things that we had on here um, on the agenda is um, trying to figure out procedures for how we would, um, like, you know, not tell them what to do, but how, if we as a board wanted something done, how we would be able to get it done. Because we can, we can ask them to do things, right? We can say, hey, you know, in order to, um, you know, can you, I don't know, pr can you make sure that this is processed, like, through the payment system, or, right. we, what, like, what is, tell me a little more about where you see the limit is, because I think that's kind of the crux of the issue. Because the board can't if direct. An employee, and if they're an employee, they're operating under the direction of the board. Right. That's right. And therefore, they are an employee. They're not. Now, why did we not want them to be an employee? N number one, because we can't afford it. And have so therefore, as soon as we step it into the realm of employee, we got to have a payroll service. We got to get into W-2s. We got to get into federal and tax reporting. Yeah. We got to pay Social Security. We got to pay workers' right. comp. Right. We, you know, so we really end up in a, in, you know, eventually we want to get there, but that's taken a big step when you start yeah. having employees. At least that's why I mm -hmm. kind of avoid employee mm -hmm. relationships first. So maybe when we forward this to the board eventually, and this is jumping ahead for a second, but maybe the way that it should be looked at is that this is an interim position and there's a specified yeah. amount of time with the assumption that then once we get through the specified amount of time there should be money we should have done some sort of revenue raising to be able to start looking at the feasibility of having an employee um, because I think that I think that'll make everyone else a little more comfortable with it as well. That's kind of where I was putting in, well, just for the initial year of startup, which uh -huh. is mm -hmm. quarter over already. So yeah. I was thinking out till next yeah. March. March, by uh -huh. the time we got organized. Uh -huh. Okay, so what's our next step? Well, I think um, I was trying to look at one of these old agreements and see if we could... Um, So here, here's a here's a here's a description of duties of a general manager mm -hmm. may include but are not limited to interpreting and ensuring compliance with all agency policies and procedures, standards of quality and safety, all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations, directing the establishment of overall strategic plans, long-term goals and objectives for the agency. Um, you know that's that's a pretty technical yeah. one. I think we want to make ours a little bit more. I mean, you want me to take it back and give a shot at including a in the scope of services a general description of the kinds of services we would expect. Yeah, I I think that would be great. Um, so Will and I worked on something that is like a scope of services. But as I'm looking at it right now, and I think now I'm better understanding what the original issue with GHAD was, which is that it was too specific, not yeah. that it was too broad, because um, we certainly got specific in terms of the things that we would be expecting from this person. I mean, if you could write them broader, like assist in administration of financial aspects of the district, yeah. assist in uh, with field activities and consultants, mm -hmm. we don't have many field activities, uh, assist with um, the archiving of records, assist with, um, you know, administering meeting, running the day-to-day -day operations or meetings. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Do I, you want to take a shot at that or do you want me to? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Okay. Um, I think that um, one of the other things is that we need to be very clear about what the board's relationship with this person is. Um, is this person like going to be, you know, getting, you know, text messages every day from each director? Is the president the point person to speak to this person and, and work with them? Or um, 
in situations where it's something that involves something like record keeping, then I would be the point person. We, I think we need to be like pretty forthcoming about that because those are the kind of questions that I feel like the board is going to be asking us is how, do, how does this whole thing work? So have you given that any thought? I, I, did, I, I didn't, but I think I hear you clearly and I would say that, you know, direction, general direction should come from the three officers of the district. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, if, if I wanted to cancel a formation committee meeting, I would work that through you so that, you know, that person, that whoever the general manager is not getting, shouldn't be barraged by board yeah. members, individual board members at all. Yeah. So I, I, I think we could work that in too. I mean, if you can work it into, you know, some of my, I, the way I wrote this, you know, this um, B is I really took that, that, um, the theory of that other handout that I had, what is a true independent contractor? Mm -hmm. And the theory behind writing this, I was using the language in that, in okay. that write-up. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it looks really good. It's but if you but if you work that paragraph in about what the ge overall general expectations are of a general manager in broad areas, I think that would be good. Yeah. So okay. So what it sounds like is we need we need three things. This exhibit A needs to be amended, amended to yeah. include more of the scope. Um, we need some sort of a like job description type of document. Uh, which is the thing that Will and I have been working on. Um, and the third thing is that we need um, some sort of a report to the board about what the board's relationship with this person is going to be. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking about the job description. I can, you know, when we when I first put this on the agenda, I said, well, let's do the long-term job description first. Mm -hmm. Then we'll do this short description for one year. And I wonder if we should do the short first. Do the short first, and 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 develop that job description as we get the full job description of what an employee would look like, mm -hmm. as we get a little bit more experience with what our expectations are of the, the interim general manager. Mm -hmm. I, think we, I think everything we can do to avoid that employee status or we right. as a board yeah. putting anything like that forward, is, is we, that should be one of the tasks of the general manager mm -hmm. is to help us work on that long-term mm -hmm. description. Yeah, that's great. See, that's that's, that's when I'm that's one of the tasks is they develop that, and yeah. maybe they also develop um, whoever the second person is, right? Which is what a financial. I mean, I don't know somebody. Yeah, probably somebody on the who knows what we need. Depends on what we do. Does that make sense? Spencer? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So this person is really just. I feel like that further solidifies the general idea that this person is a, a temporary person who's going to assist us in the start phases of the district. Right. And I, and I don't think it eliminates that that person in the long term couldn't become the paid general manager. It happens a lot that, That's true. that you convert that person mm -hmm. into that long term paid person on employee. Definitely. And then the relationship changes a little bit too when they become mm -hmm. an employee, then it's more being directed by the board. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Um, okay, so looking forward. I mean, forward. the real pur purpose of an independent, independent versus a, a dependent co a employee is really the federal government that wants you to collect and pay taxes. That's right. Yeah. That's I mean, the driver. And that's the driver. And that's the thing when I sent those experts from that answer book, that's out of a retirement plan benefit book that I find really good about technical uh -huh. issues is, yeah. is when can you put a person in a retirement plan. Uh -huh. Okay. Because there are some tricks like you could have a um, for contractors on payroll at the county, you can actually avoid paying FICA taxes, which is 
the 15% tax by contributing 1.25% to an alternative um, retirement plan. Uh -huh. And the university does the same thing for their temporary employees because I was when I was teaching, I was in their plan. And so then the university only has to contribute 1.25 and we only have to contribute, the employee only has to contribute 1.25. And it's just an alternative retirement uh -huh. plan when you get into that arena. Okay. okay. So. Yeah. No, I th I think that, that that's good to know. Um, okay. So I'm gonna I'll let you take a shot while I'm gone, and then do yeah. we put it on the next agenda, or do we want to well, have a so yeah, special meeting to get this out of committee? That that's and that's what I was gonna talk about next is the timeline for this. So our next regular meeting for board business will be on the sixth of June. And Bob, you're leaving on the, the first of June. The first of June. So I think it would be good for us to have another meeting um, before that time. Schedule a special meeting to okay. work through some of these things. Um, so let I mean, we can do this now, or we can wait till the end of the meeting and see if we want to schedule one. Yeah, I yeah. Let's see how the other agenda items go, and okay. maybe this will be the only thing. But okay. I take it to heart what you said at the last regular board meeting. This is probably like the most important thing that needs to come out of this committee to get back to the board at the next meeting. That's right. I mean, and, and it's just, we should get it done. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. So right. as many meetings as we need just to touch base and get back together on this. Um, yeah, let's definitely. Let's do it. Definitely, and thank you so much for preparing this, Bob. I, I think that the contract really looks great. Um, you, you know, the only thing you guys could this. take a good look at mm -hmm. Um, is I was a little bit hazy on the insurance provisions. So I'm on number 13 and so this particular contract yeah. model I took from the county and it's for their contractors on payroll. Mm -hmm. So their contractors on payroll are a form of county employee, mm -hmm. even though they're independent, don't have a job description. Um, it's more like for the doctors and um, where you can't pay them enough wages like the OBGYN and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So here, it's the district will defend and identify contractor against any claim, lawsuit, judgment arising out of the contractor. So that means we're picking up coverage. And so when I talk to, um, I get this really mixed message talking to the insurance people. One group says, no, you can't cover those independent contractors. And then Alliance says, well, if your district employee was driving a county car or district car or driving their own car up for the benefit of the district and got in an accident, whoever goes after that, em that employee would, could go after their insurance and then they could come after us because they were working for us and therefore, yes, we would indemnify them against that and our coverage would cover that. So in, in that respect, this language is okay. Um, but I just want, I'm not an insurance expert, we're gonna get that on, on another item, but I, I, I think it's okay how it's written, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, if we don't have a broad insurance coverage, right. we're gonna have to have the contractor indemnify us. Right, we're, you know, talking to insurance people, you know, one group say, oh, you just need errors and omissions. And then I talked to the next group, they go, no, you need general liability coverage for yeah. driving automobiles and all that kind of stuff. And I go, oh, okay. You know, and they had a, when we get to the insurance one, we can talk about that, and getting coverage. So, so okay. if you guys just read this, there's a couple other little um, corrections under nine, under taxes. I got a typo on districts. Oh, yeah, that's fine. On number 14. I'm missing a space between discrimination and regulation. Okay. On 17, I misspelled president. Okay. And on 24, compliance with the law. 
<laughs> Let me know on that one if I should add, 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 comply with all dis maybe add district, county, state, and federal ordinances and statutes. I don't know if county applies there and if I should be substituting district. Hmm. Would any county I'd love to be safe? I would any county add, ordinances yeah. and statutes apply to our district? So we yeah. sh we'll just mm -hmm. add district there. Yeah. Okay. I can make those corrections in photo revised. Okay. And cool. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I can make the corrections. You want to make those? If, if, okay. If you wanted me to come back with that, the, that's fine. With the new yeah. One. Okay. That sounds great. <clears throat> yeah. I I think this is looking really good. I was impressed. It's easy when you copy and paste. <laughs> True. <laughs> Don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Sure. Well, the scope of services I think is important, and that's a good discussion we had about adding that general description. Make sure we come to an arrangement to sell to the board when we go into the board why we're suggesting this independent contractor relationship. That's right. Yeah, and I think that that was kind of what I was getting at when I talked about the report. It's both why the committee is suggesting this. Kind of similar to what a staff report that would come out of right. the committee and would go to the Board of Supervisors would say. Right. But we would also go more in detail about this is the way that the relationship between an independent contractor and the Board would work. Right. And so are we going to put that in the scope of services that, or is that going to be in the, in just the Board action that the contact is between the Board officers and I, I, like I said, I think it's a, it's a separate report, I think. Or you're talking about the relationship. Yeah. Some of the relationship and the procedures behind that would go into the scope of services. Okay. So but you it might would be more say extensive they the would they would seek general direction from from the president or its other officers. That's right. Okay. Okay. And put that in the scope. That's right. It, okay. it would be nice, you know, from my personal perspective, especially when we're on, have this open board where we can't work with each other be, ahead of the meeting, it would be nice to be able to have the general manager with general direction from the board to be able to review some work like if I was doing a staff report mm -hmm. it would be nice if I could bounce that staff report off somebody just to read look for typos not get something I actually I hate it when I get something up on the board and then I go well that's not what I really meant and give it back to me <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah okay now do we want to have something on the process in the a suggestion to our board what the process is going to be yeah um, so I would imagine here again and this is me looking at a calendar the next meeting is the sixth and we're gonna have something a little more formal to come out of this committee before the sixth right we also have the special meeting that's scheduled on the 30th so um, but that's not going to be a business meeting at all right so I would say that we, given that we have a meeting on the 6th and we have a meeting on the 20th, I would say that we should aim to get this approved by the board before students leave town, which will be on the 16th, June 16th. So whether that recall, that, I mean, the board can decide if it wants to do a special meeting if it or if it's ready to do that at the 6th meeting, but I think that it's important that we get that out before students leave so that everyone knows about it and we avoid, we kind of sidestep any sort of criticism that we would get because of that. Right. So couldn't we have it so that it was available for the 6th and the process starts on the 7th? Oh, definitely. 100%. And are I think, you, are the, you the, thinking pro the process is, would just be floating a job description, I'd imagine. Right, or the scope of services and the agreement you could. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those things in, right. in a packet. Right. Um, and then that would be um, the outreach for that. I would imagine would be done by the president, 
possibly working with the other officers. And so who do you think would interview, is, are we gonna suggest a process that the, the officers of the district, that's not a forum, right, interview the top applicants and then would they just forward one name to the whole board? Or do you think that we would take the top two applicants and have them go into a public meeting? Which I know George saying that's mm. not necessarily. Well, for attorneys, I don't think, think that. it works for a city manager. I don't know. Most, most people that are, if you want a really well qualified person, they're not going to put themselves through that kind of a process. Right. Yeah, I kind of, I generally agree with that. What yeah. you're looking at is if you get a couple of retired people who have a lot of time on their hands, right? And no, right. So you want a meeting of the minds between the officers of the organization, and then they just forward that name to the board. Yeah, I mean, I think we can. I think we can. This is where. I do believe we have, under the law, the ability to go into closed session <coughs> and really have a, a robust discussion about candidates and who I'm not sure if we could do that for independent contractors. For potential employees, I think we can, but I'll have to look at that. Gotcha. It's probably true. Probably. The more you can do it in public, the better you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, like we don't, we don't want to pull a fast one on the students or something, you know. So we do want it in the open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on the other hand, the the um, the board the board is only going to get to discuss the candidates in an open session. And I mean, a major uh, if if we if we had the, the am I going to share with? I mean, are you going to share information that you have regarding, you know, experiences you might have with a candidate? You can't share it with the three officers because that's a Brown Act violation. Yeah, right. Well, it's, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I think we worry we worry too much. Let's let's get the process yeah. rolling. Yeah. And then, I, I think it. I think we have. Some and then let the, the board. Part. You know what? Let the board noodle it for fifteen minutes about what they would feel most. I mean, I know myself, uh, do I really want to be presented with a name and this is it? Take it or leave it? Uh, for this one I will, but not for the full-time yeah. paid. Right. right. Yeah, That's a no, different I agree. process, I think. Yeah, yeah and I think right. the circumstances are something that should be taken into account. It's a lot different of a situation given that we don't have any sort of structure. Okay, so we're going to let that... The board, we, we might put some in your board staff letter, we could put some suggestions, mm -hmm. yeah. but we let the board make a decision on the process they want to use. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I agree with that. So I'm gonna bring back uh, those things, I'm gonna bring back the staff report. Hopefully a one item special meeting of our formation committee, right? Yeah, I would imagine yeah. so. Okay. Um, and then the amended uh, agreement. I mean, if there's any one thing that we want to get done, it's what you said. This is it. Get it out yeah. the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just have a want to make a motion that we'll schedule a special meeting to continue this item, or can we continue this? Let's. Meeting? Well, let's wait till the end of and, the meeting. Okay. Make sure we don't have anything else we need to boot. All right. We're good to go on this item? Yeah, Done? I think so. Oh, any public comment on that item? All right. Let's uh, go to item two. Consider request for proposals for legal service approved return to the Board of Directors for final approval prior to its release. Discuss and consider a proposal for legal service by an individual firm to assist the District of General Legal Counsel and provide assistance to the district during its startup over the first year, discuss a process for selecting legal counsel. So I think we started this process at the board because George took action and delivered letters to... They haven't been delivered. They have not? No. Did we approve them at the last meeting? I thought they sent it back to us. And what was the reason that it, we were going to look at it one more time? Um, I 
Oh, I thought that was something else. I can go back approved? and look at the draft minutes and Why don't see. Why don't you look at the minutes and just see? Okay. I thought they sent it back to us, that Could letter. Hmm. I thought that they sent back the financial agreement to us. They definitely sent back the financial agreement yeah. to us. Alright, well, we can continue the discussion while I look for this. Cause okay. Do you want to um, yeah. so do one of the easy ones on the financial? Like, you want to do the wanna number three? You're just still looking that up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You want to go to number three for a minute? Yeah. Is that a quick one? What? Yeah, it's a quick one. So, discuss accounting services for the district, reviews, revised draft memorandum of agreement between IVCSD and the county auditor, approve and return to the board of directors for final approval or submit to the board president for execution. When we look up the the minutes, I forgot, I think we were returning this to the board, but I wasn't sure. Okay. So, here's a, another draft, and this is after the auditor's review. Mm -hmm. um, they added the first whereas, whereas IBCSD has chosen the county treasurer to be the district treasurer and placed their funds in the county treasury. Mm -hmm. That's only the auditor thinking in terms of, hey, they are the treasurer. Now we're talking about yeah. accounting services. And then on 3A, they just made that the billing rate will be $50 startup and $500 per fiscal year, and then the rate will apply to the two years, blah, blah. Thereafter, the billing rate shall be the cost allocated as part of the County of Santa Barbara cost allocation plan. The way the cost allocation plan works, if they charge us a fixed fee, and it's more or less, it will adjust in that third year, so we didn't need this other language in there. And then they also made a uh, correction to Theo's name, Theodore A. Filati. Oh, okay. And the last thing they were going to do is they were running this by county council to see if they actually needed to take it to the Board of Supervisors because it's only a $500 agreement. And so we don't have agreements like this with any of our other special districts. I think we wanted to do this so our board understood what the services were. Um, so we'll see what. Uh, Gazzoni has to say of whether we have to take it to the board. Mm -hmm. So, but the next step is for this to go to the go back CSD board. Go back to our board. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we refer this to this to our CSD board. I second. And that's just pending whether we need a signet, whether I'd revise it for that signature. I should be able to find out today or tomorrow. Okay. Well, we're, we're 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 taking this back to the board and we're authorizing the. Board president to then continue the process on by going and yeah. speaking to these people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if we submit it to the board with, if we don't need the county board of supervisors to hear this, we'll just go simply with the signatures that are necessary. Okay. okay. Right, hold on. Let me write up this motion. Any public comment on this issue? No public comment. Um, so, motion to recommend the board enter into an agreement to provide financial and accounting services 
with the county of Santa Barbara. Is that friendly, George? Yes. All right. How about the county of Santa Barbara? Do we want to add auditor controller? Okay. Office? Friendly. Just in case they can do it unilaterally. Uh, so the motion is to recommend to the board that they enter into an agreement to provide financial and accounting services with the County of Santa Barbara Auditor Controller's Office. And public comment. Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's it. The other, the other two, good. four and five, are to that's right. get back to where we don't name these positions. So maybe we can quickly take four and five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have the info back on two if you wanted to do that one first. Okay, let's well. go to two. Back to two. Okay. Um, so the board authorized um, the president to sign the letters and mail them to the interested okay. parties. Cool. Okay, good. Okay, so we started a process and that is soliciting the bar. It's soliciting Women. three organizations. Yeah. One of them is the bar. One of them is Santa Barbara Women Lawyers. The other one I can't remember. Legal Aid Foundation. Legal Aid yeah. Foundation, right. okay. So at the same time, I did um, include as part of the agenda a communication that um, Mr. Trindle, who is attending the meeting, um, has sent out to us um, you know, offering his uh, services to the district he even you know got a little stronger in terms of that position by showing us a draft proposal for what a contract would look like uh, that's not included with your packet but he sent that to me mm -hmm. um, you have copies of that and I didn't make copies of it but okay. I will oh awesome mr. Trindle has copies thank you thank you I got one. And uh, not only did he include what an agreement would be, but he also um, has an attachment A of what um, a fee agreement would be and attachment an exhibit B, a statement of billing practices for legal services. So, um, okay. He also has a, um, just on our general manager description, you can see that in his, um, his agreement, he has a scope of work and duties that is number two. Yeah, so I noticed that. Might be a little format that we could use for um, our own agreement <laughs> for general manager. That's right, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give it a little yeah. cross-reference then. Yeah, it's cross-reference, right. So, I'll let you guys stew on that for a few minutes and then maybe we can ask Mr. Trindle if he would like to make a little presentation. That sounds great.
Sure, if I ask a question, preliminary question. Sure. Of Ross. Um, have you made any donations to the university? I have contributed to the Alumni Association, not to the university directly. Okay. Uh, over and above your annual member? On a lifetime member? Uh huh. And have you made additional contributions? I have in the past, I haven't currently. I have a reason. Okay. I think I need to recuse myself from this discussion since he's a somebody who's made contributions specifically to my alumni association. Okay. I hate to do it. I really hate to do it. But given yeah. given that the this uh, the standards in Isla Vista for conflicts of interest are, are much higher than in the rest of the world. So um, I hope that doesn't does that I I I I think that uh, do we want to, we, before we hear from Mr. Trindle directly, yeah, you probably, do you probably want to step out on how we handle this particular contract, mm -hmm. proposed contract? Okay. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll See you guys. You ready for discussion yet? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We'll take, I we'll take get only you 10 minutes, take a walk around the park, you know. Just go take a walk, George. Yeah. Cool off. <laughs> we'll, we'll be done pretty. Bring us some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any general discussion amongst us? Um, I'd love to hear from Mr. Trindle. From the, Mr. Yeah. Trindle? Yes. Yeah. Happy to hear from you. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here, and thanks for putting some of this information on the agenda. Glad I was able to provide a, a copy of the uh, draft services agreement. Uh, in terms of what the agreement provides, it's, it's, uh, it's comprehensive. Uh, but it's also uh, fairly standard for the types of legal services that my firm provides. Uh, for the record, T-R-I-N-D-L-E. Uh, I did send out an email blurb initially uh, to President Bertrand. I know that the district has been very busy, and I didn't actually hear from him for a couple of weeks because of other duties that he had. So it's at that point uh, that I approached uh, Mr. Brandt. I sent him an email correspondence, uh, and then uh, based on my attendance last week, uh, he encouraged me to put together this information to present to the, the next board meeting, or I'm sorry, the next committee meeting for the committee to discuss, ask questions, uh, perhaps give me some direction about that might assist in having this uh, go to the full board at their next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, so it was upon his invitation that I did that and submitted the information to uh, Chairman Geis, and that's uh, Kind of how we got here. So, for your record yeah. of how I got here, I got it a little bit after we had published the agenda. So, I didn't put this on on as part of the the agenda or a late follow up. But Understood. It to the meeting. And when you're running everything yourselves, uh, those types of decisions have to be made. Uh, just you know, briefly, I graduated from UCSB in 1999. I was part of the Law Society uh, Department. I don't believe it still exists, uh, but I had a criminal justice emphasis. I was also part of Associated Students. I was uh, the chair of the Judicial Council for three years and I wrote the Judicial Council Code that was in use until about 2005, 2006 when a lot of Associated Students went through uh, some evolution in terms of the party system and other uh, other things. Uh, but I've been doing, I've been, it's my 14th year of practice. Uh, I've been involved in representing public agencies uh, on their behalf uh, since my career began. Uh, I did start out initially at Santa Clara University, graduated in 2003. Uh, looking at uh, high-tech intellectual property, but the market was terrible. And uh, through circumstances, uh, I ended up uh, coming into government uh, representation in terms of general counsel work, uh, primarily uh, representing public employees, law enforcement, public safety, and uh, teachers and administrators uh, for the first half of my career. And then I started getting into general counsel work uh, after that representing uh, publicly appointed bodies, uh, publicly elected bodies, uh, such as the, the Community Services District. But I also have a, a background in, in technology and public safety, and some of the issues that I follow are the intersection between uh, tech and local government, uh, drones, privacy policies, for instance, uh, uh, body cameras on uh, law enforcement, uh, the use of uh, paperless systems to provide 
uh, agendas, you know, those kinds of, of uh, topics that are at the, the cross sec or the intersection between technology and public service. I'll share a reminder, my firm, uh, all of our clients, I would say 98% are public agencies. And we don't sue public agencies unless it's in the course of representing a public agency ourselves. We are primarily defense oriented. Uh, overall, in terms of litigation, we, we represent public agencies and public employees. Uh, we have, I think, 21 cities up and down the state from uh, Sassoon up in the, the Bay Area, uh, kind of more towards Sacramento to Morro Bay, on down to the city of Carson, uh, Cerritos, and all the way out to uh, yeah, the town of Yucca Valley out in the San Bernardino County Desert, uh, the city of Paris, Hesperia. So it rained, ranges from the small uh, Arvin in uh, Kern County, uh, eight to 9,000 people, on up to you know, the city of Carson, t tens of thousands of people. Uh, and we provide all uh, services that a local government agency needs from bond council, financing, how to secure financing, uh, what are the regulations for, I mean, oversight of that, uh, that the, those finances, public safety in particular uh, for me, uh, water infrastructure, uh, delivery of services, and just the administration of local governments, Brown Act, uh, compliance, open meeting laws, uh, your Form 700s, so I've been watching the, uh, the agendas to see uh, you know, if you're complying with that, uh, AB 1234 training, uh, sexual harassment avoidance training, you know, all of those types of uh, government compliance issues that are a particular concern uh, given the desire for transparency and what's going on in uh, the broader conversation. And uh, I've been watching the district form uh, over time. You know, when I was here, it wasn't as close of an issue. Uh, there was the question really was, is it gonna be incorporated into Santa Barbara City? Is it gonna be incorporated into Goleta? And neither happened. And once I got when the uh, AB6 uh, came around to uh, form the district and that passed and I was watching the UUT, that didn't pass and kind of watching to see how everything was gonna happen and uh, I figured, you know, they're gonna need some help and I think that I've got a, a pretty good blend of uh, professional skills, I've got a, a good background in the, in the community, uh, <coughs> staying in, in relative close contact with the community to see how it's grown up over time. There were no multi-story buildings in downtown Ivy when I was here. Uh, you know, I lived at the end of Trigo. Uh, you know, I've uh, been a part of the, the landlord-tenant system. Uh, so, you know, I've seen how, how that can play out and how that has an impact on uh, the delivery of services. Uh, and I've helped, you know, small organizations and large organizations. And it's an opportunity to really provide the space and the structure that I think that the district can benefit from to be able to spend less time on the form of a general manager agreement and more time on finding a funding source, more time on developing policy. Because in the end, your tenures will come and go, but the district structure will remain the same. And that's going to be important to lay down here in the very beginning. Just like you're, you're gonna build a building, you gotta put in a strong foundation so that when you know, the initial representatives uh, come and go, that you still have robust systems in place to be able to support the next batch of elected and appointed officials that, that come in. And that's that's really what we do. We, as a general counsel, uh, I nor my colleagues, we don't set policy. We, we take policy direction and we give you legal guidance on how to best implement the policy decisions the board makes. We're not here as another board member. Uh, we're not here to tell you what you should or should not do except in so much as what the legal ramifications are. And it's our practice to give you a heads up on, in addition to the law, you might wanna think about how this might impact these other considerations. But in the end, it's the board members who were elected and appointed, it's your jobs to decide on the policy, where it's gonna go, and then it's our job to help you meet that, those policy uh, objectives. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind is that uh, this is an interim thing. My, my proposal, the proposal of my firm, is to provide the services on a significantly reduced basis. Uh, an organization of this size for six months worth of work would probably be on the order of you know, $35,000 on a, a flat fee in addition to you know, possible other, other charges. 
as it's shown in Exhibit A, you know, interest of transparency, it's a thousand bucks for first three months, and it's a thousand bucks for the last three months. And you, there's a pretty, I have a lot of flexibility in terms of providing grace periods if, for whatever reason, the funding, you know, isn't showing up. Um, you know, I plan to keep costs low, um, and it's all flat rate. Right? So if, if I spend 50 hours helping you, then I spend 50 hours helping you. It, the cost doesn't go up. So you have at least a, some certainty as to what it would look like and at the end of six months, if for whatever reason the district decides, or if it decides in, in the interim period, that it doesn't like me, doesn't like my firm, for whatever reason, you can get rid of us. And uh, you'll go back to the, the Bar Association or the, uh, the Women in Law Group or you know, the other groups that you're reaching out to to see if you can't um, find somebody to, to come in and, and to, to keep helping you. So, that's the overview. Uh, primarily, I'm here to answer questions. Yeah. Uh, I just have a couple quick ones. What do you think? What do you think if if we went through the first six months and then we needed you for, we still hadn't got to where we we're going to get our tax approved? What do you think the next the rates for the next six months would be or the next year if we want to continue on an interim? I have a lot of flexibility to reflect where the district is. You know, I've I've already run this up the chain of command at my firm. Uh, they they understand uh, the situation that the district is in, and they understand that sometimes it takes time that people aren't necessarily always willing to open their wallets. So the, the goal would be to negotiate whatever would be palatable to, to the district. A few more minutes, yeah. It, whether okay. that's the same, whether that's lower, whether that's higher. Yeah, our, our goal is, is to provide services that and, and to be sensitive to What, the, what do you think that, what's the typical you, you know, in a typical year, if we were we had our tax in place and we were offering, you know, any of our eight services, how, how much do you think our legal budget would be for a, for if if we were not in startup? If you're not in startup, you've got a couple years behind you. You've got uh, some professional staff, administrative staff, and you have at least a, a well, you've got parking, sidewalks. If you had a UUT and you also had planning and some code enforcement, uh, not assuming that you would try and activate any of the other powers uh, under the special districts law, uh, I think that your overall budget is probably going to be uh, on the order of, uh, I'd say, three, three and a half to five million dollars. That's what you would be taking in uh, in revenue, and I think your your legal bills would probably be about seventy-five thousand because you've got you're, you're effectively the size of a small city. You know, you're only 4,000 or so residents sh shorter of Goleta. Yeah. And so if you want an approximation, I'd look at Goleta and take off maybe 10 to 15% since you don't provide all of the services that they do. But I can tell you from experience, the primary cost for a, a municipal type of entity is going to be public safety. That's going to be about 75% of your overall operating budget expense. Um, well, we're going to cut well, public safety currently is just supplemental law enforcement with the university or the sheriff. So it's only going to be an agreement and we'll probably, you know, make sure that they indemnify us and they carry the insurance to contract that because I know that's maybe in the future we could get into law enforcement full blown, but it seems like, you know, it seems like our budget, even if the tax got approved, would be not probably more than under a million for the next few years unless we got into infrastructure financing and borrowing and and uh, be a while till we get up to the size of the city of Santa Barbara well I'm, city of Goleta. right and what my estimate is based on is the number of powers that you already okay. have activated if you're okay. going to operate a parking district any type of public uh, if you're looking at uh, like if graffiti abatement you're going to need enforcement yeah, uh, gotcha. officers to handle yeah, that. Right. If you're looking at zoning enforcement or building enforcement, okay, th those are the types. That of helps. That, that really helps m with my question. Okay. So, Spencer, any other comments? Um, well, first off, I would just say thank you for preparing this and putting yep. this to us. I really appreciate it. Um, it sounds like you have a really strong background in Ilovista and in the community, and I, I think everyone will really appreciate that. Um, the only thing. Um, that at this point for, for me, um, I, I think that this is not necessarily something that is within this item, but we, we need to have um, 
some more of the fundraising figured out so that we can make sure we can meet these obligations because entering into this agreement would you know to yeah. that, that's yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we're, yeah. we're so we're going to have to to get that figured out and um i think that's something that we need to be speaking to in um at the board meeting right about um whether or not that's something the university is interested in using right. some of the admin cut for yeah or whether or not that's something we uh, should fundraise for yeah um so i mean i i think this looks really good and I, I should definitely take time to read it all i skimmed it a little bit um but i mean i think that in terms of you know i, I did a little research about the firm and the different places that you represent it looks it all looks really good um I'm really impressed and um i think that given the the, the way that things are working out, it, it's, we should probably try to enter into an agreement sooner rather than later. Right. I, so my kind of gut reaction is, um, I think I really appreciate this proposal because it gives the district the opportunity to say, hey, there is a solution out there. Mm -hmm. And That's right. in the next six months, it wouldn't kill us. And yes, this. This is a great alternative, That's right. um, and it helps us to set our expectations. I think that we started this other process of doing this solicitation to the community. We should bring you into that process and say, look, we have a good application. We'd like to get more applications like this. If somebody else has as high of a, you know, as hungry as you are, I don't want to say hungry, but you want to come serve the community with this. I, I I think, you know, having something in place by June, you know, the end of June is good. It's 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 either this or you know we'll listen to a few other solicitations if we get any. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that sounds great. So I I would so simply move this to. I, I'm not sure how we get this information before the full board. Um, well, or if we just wait for the rest of the process to catch up with us as we submit this the rest of the process you mean with the, the others the, yeah the other solicitations I mean I, I think that I think that we can move this to the full board we have to we'd have to make some sort of a recommendation on something or I mean we could always just attach it I think the recommendation is that we consider this application as part yeah. of the rest of the solicitation yeah. Okay. Do Do we want to make that as certainly? A yeah. I'll um I'll move that we that we consider um this draft uh, agreement between um is it Alishar and Winder? Winder. Wine Alishar and Winder um and IBCSD um for consideration by the full board. Uh, second. Yeah, let me cut it up. Okay for George to come back in now. Uh, as soon as we Assuming vote on this. Yeah. Are you local by chance? No, not not currently. Uh, but I I've done back. the travel up here and back many, many times. So So where do you live? I live in Upland, which is near Ontario Airport. Oh cool. Our mm -hmm. our the office closest to me is in uh, Riverside. Okay. Uh, our office closest to the district generally is uh, well, I guess you're kind of equidistant between Fresno and, and uh, El Segundo. Uh, we have a lot of technology, so it's just that our our office is where we throw our, up our you know our wall of power, all of our wall trash. But we really don't. We're not really tied to any one place. We're very mobile. I work at home half the time. Uh, okay. you know, I've got small kids. There's six and four. So yeah, cool. um, from all over. That's great. <coughs> All right, so the um, motion is that we recommend that the board consider the draft agreement between A&W and the district as part of the discussion for attaining legal services. Is that friendly? Yep. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Thanks. We appreciate it very much. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you, Russ. <coughs> George, we're good. <coughs> Really 
we just move this whole issue to the whole board for their consideration. Okay. So, great. Did a very nice presentation. Yes. Awesome. All Thank right. you. Thank you so much, Ross. Okay. <coughs> we'll go back to item four. Uh, review procedures for making deposits to the county treasury approved and returned to the district board. Request the district board to sign a director as contract for treasury services. Treasury has requested the district provide uh, mail address, contact name, contact phone number, and a contact email. So rather than assigning a director into a position, we avoid that issue and we just probably need to make a director the contract. Um, it, it could be the president since he's the one that is authorized to accept donations and stuff, you know, and so if we want to give that duty to the president, then I would assume that that director would be making deposits to the bank. We keep it as simple as that. If the treasurer had a problem with the deposit, then they're going to contact whoever that individual is. Yeah. So they'll just be taking on some treasury accounting procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And most likely would have access to FIN in case they wanted to print out electronic reports about deposits. So I, I is that it? You know, that the way we did it before by naming a director, I agreed with Ethan, that created a problem. We were creating a... Yeah. And so I, I think the simplest way, and you touch on it to get around that, is to recommend that it's the board president. Okay, who's I, I, agree, I would agree. Um, and in terms of the other things in this item, like a, uh, a mailing address, I think that's something that we just have to wait on office space for. Um, I mean, because otherwise we'd have to, and we kind of spoke about that beforehand, I think. Did we, we move forward on that if somebody contacted with, did Ethan contact Mona, or the CEO, do we know? Um, I'd have to go review minutes, but I don't I'm pretty so. sure there's some action that was taken. There was. Uh, we what? did take an action. I thought tag. you were going to continue our discussions. No? I, I think Ethan was going to formally, you made a motion that we formally oh, okay. request, write a letter, write a letter mm -hmm. to Mona. So okay. yeah, we should jump on that mm -hmm. if, if we haven't done it already. That's so um, I'll make a mo motion that we recommend that um, the board president uh, is assigned as the point of contact for uh, the county treasury. I'll second that. Do we want to include in that something along the lines of things like making deposits and or is this merely for contacts? I, I would assume that and that person would be the point person to make deposits. Because mm -hmm. they're going to get three things. They're going to get a receipt book that they can give the customer a receipt. We'd have the donation form in case it was a donation that they could, that he's the best person to sign that. And then he would have to fill out a deposit ticket and take it over to the bank to make the deposit. That's a three part ticket. He would then give that to the accounting person. And then the accounting person will have to go into. Uh, the financial system and when a deposit goes into your account it goes into an account that says unidentified deposit and then the accounting person goes in there they identify the deposit and they put it in the right account mm -hmm. our accounting person or whoever we're going to designate as our accounting person in number two mm -hmm. so the motion would be to recommend that the board president be assigned to interface with the county treasury and make deposits yes Okay. And who, who's the second on that? Me. Okay. All in favor? Public comment. Public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 So the next one is item five is review procedures for initiating and approving accounting entries in the county accounting system. Request the district board to sign a director as contact for accounting services and to initiate accounting entries. Request the district board authorize the president to approve the accounting entries. So here, 
I meant to put any. So the accounting process is a two-step process. One, somebody has to technically go prepare either a um, deposit, you know, they have to prepare a payment. They could prepare a journal voucher moving money between accounts. They could approve uh, budget transfers. Sometimes that's a one-person transaction, and sometimes it's a two-person transaction, meaning somebody, if you're initiating a payment, it's going to be a two-person transaction, meaning I'd prepare the payment, somebody else would approve the payment in the district. And so we kind of need, in the absence of the general manager, which I would say the general manager should be involved in this process when we have one, that we should just have two directors assigned to the process. And it could be as simple as, if we want, me to initiate the transactions and the board president to approve them. And if that's how we want to do it. I mean, eventually then we could take my duties, whatever I was doing to initiate transactions, and move them over to the board and we president. could we move that to the to board the general the manager. Ah, okay. Uh, so the general manager. Oh, yeah, that would make more sense. Okay. Yeah, and the, the president's just approving those. Okay. Now, in some districts, they take all the approval of transactions to the full board before they process the trend, the payments. My personal opinion is, I think that should be done after the fact and just inform the board because I've never seen in my career where some board has said, we're not gonna authorize that payment because normally when you're doing a payment, you have a purchase order or a contract or an agreement already and you're yeah. just making payments against that agreement. That's right. Yeah. So I don't know how to craft that motion easily. Well, you're looking to designate a, recommend that the board designate a director to be on this front end of the, to prepare transactions. Yeah. What else is there? So, let's see how we would say that. Just fulfill all functions of a, just just assign a assign a director to initiate accounting entries and authorize the president to approve those um, transactions and maybe in accounting entries we could put in brackets deposits um, payments, budget transactions. After entries, deposits. After entries, put in brackets, deposits, payments. vendor payments, um, or just payments, call them just payments, and then um, budget transactions. Now, I'm happy to volunteer to be your second person as opposed to the board president but if you feel like politically it should be the board president yeah let's do it with the board president because okay. then there's just two of us we have to set up access for we'll keep it simple until we get a general yeah. manager and at this point we also have to consider the communication between directors about these things yeah yeah that so. would be easier but i think that the system we've crafted where we don't have to create a bunch of new officer positions is better than what we came up with beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's not what my intention was, but uh -huh. I know how it came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, did you have a motion on this one? Uh, I move to assign <coughs> or to recommend that the board assign a director to prepare and initiate accounting entries, deposits, payments, budget transactions and authorize the president to approve these transactions. Maybe after budget entries, put comma, et cetera, or uh, okay. meaning that there's probably, yeah, we could name of others, it's in the agreement. True. You made that motion? Yes. I'll, se I'll second. Okay. Call for any public comment? Call for the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. You know, from there, oh, the, I have one more thing that 
I want to make sure we cover, and then from there it's you know just continue. Just wide open. So let me tell you what I did for um, insurance. So I contacted Alliant, had a pretty good discussion with them. They were not inclined to come do a presentation for the board. And they're you know not in this neck of the country. Oh. He did give me some good advice. He said, look, we have developed for um, various entities like ours something called SLIP, which is Special Liability Insurance Program. And they, you know, the provisions are for errors and omissions, general liability, auto liability, and to give coverage to employees, which might, in, you know, would be coverage to directors. Um, that does not include things like crime insurance or um, theft, employee theft, um, those types of coverage. He went on to say, oh, I'm surprised Skirma didn't offer that to you. I said, no, they, they shoved me right over to you. And then he got to discussing, he says, well, you could submit a policy to me, but we're in the process of moving $100 million worth of businesses from one of our current brokers. And they are not looking favorable or they're giving us difficulty in writing new policies. So then I go, oh, am I just saying that my account's not worth it for the amount of liability you've been taking on, and we really don't want to provide coverage to you as an organization because you're kind of at a high risk status without a lawyer. I mean, I tell them the truth. We don't have a lawyer. We don't have a general manager. We just have boards of directors. And I go, hmm. So then he says, but I have somebody who competes with Skirma, and you should contact them. And they are called, um, uh, Golden State Risk Management Authority, and uh, I opened up their portable portal today and said, oh, they look like they have a really nice portal and a lot of good information, and they're a pooled insurance authority. So... Are they for-profit or not-for-profit? or I would say they're for-profit. Okay. But they represent over a hundred government entities, and... Um, Golden State Risk Management Authority is the premier risk sharing insurance pool for public entities in California. Hmm. Current members include cemetery districts, special districts, water, sewer, and lighting, fire districts, school districts, counties, and cities. So, <clears throat> I, <laughs> have you gotten anywhere near a, a premium? Price. I asked the lion what was in the ballpark was three to five thousand in the ballpark and he said that was in the ballpark so okay. I was just gonna I think when I approach if I approach Golden Golden State Risk Golden State sounds I, I think I think I have to be careful about how I approach these guys because yeah. I almost yeah. have to sell them on the district yeah. that that we want insurance, but I don't want to scare them away. But that that it's not worth their effort, mm, you know. So yeah, but it's looking for your sage advice. I call these guys, tell them that you know, because you know one thing in insurance is they're going to go. You have to tell them what you want insured. It's almost like they can't. A lion. I realize they can't come to us and give us advice on insurance and then sell it to us. They, you yeah. know, they need to have us say, well, what's our risk and how much do we want to buy? Got it, because otherwise we turn around and sue them and say, you should have told us to insure our, right. our furniture right. against fire. Right. Okay. So it's a little bit more digging around and you know but it sounds like you've made the initial thing is these these people have more business than they need and a small special district 
out in the middle of California with with just directors and no legal and mm -hmm. no general yeah. manager that's experienced in risk and I'm gonna sell insurance to you. Uh, why don't you go talk to this guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if, if you guys authorize me, I'll contact these guys, but I think I have to say, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I looked on Maybe talk about how we're in the process of getting ready to attain legal counsel. Yeah. yeah. Instead of, no, we just don't have a lawyer. I mean, right. But yeah. Right. I have to be we're, more. We're onboarding somebody, right? Yeah, we're right. onboarding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, like the first person goes, oh, you're having meetings and you have no coverage? And I go, oops. <laughs> yeah. And so, you guys are risky behavior. Being, yeah, and you have no money, yeah. you have no tax, and so. I'll move that you continue to explore this. Okay, yeah. Um, I still think we we need to get this nailed ASAP. So is there a way to get something that might we might be able to enter into before you leave? Oh. I think that's really going to push it hard. Well, I think what I need to come back with is that I think we should be applying for insurance that is similar to that SLIP program. Mm -hmm. That's I a think, great name for it, too. Yeah. Come up with, some lawyer came up with that. Special yeah. liability <laughs> insurance Slip. that gives us general liability, auto liability, errors and omissions liability. Yeah. Um, if think, we have an employee I and or independent contractors, do we have coverage? What kind of coverage do we have there? Does that seem like what we need? Mm -hmm. And I don't think at this point we need crime insurance or employee theft. And I don't think we need, um, he gave me something he was talking about. There's lots of other insurance to get. It would, st I still haven't found it. I'll look at their website. And I asked Alliant for their promotional materials on SLIP, and I didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm going to look harder at their website and say, is there something that we could provide to our board that makes sure that we all understand all the risks that are involved? And, you know, I could go to the literature or something just to say, and maybe, maybe Ray at the, mm -hmm. at the county can help me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, so let me know too, as if if you want me to carry this as you head out. In other words, if you want me to keep it rolling, I'm happy to pick okay. up wherever you leave off. Okay, so Just maybe we could maybe we could put this. Well, we'll consider this as part of our special meeting, just so we okay. know how to do yeah. the handoff. That sounds good. Well, and I'll look into it too. You'll look into it too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We we do have a motion, and that's a motion that Bob continue to explore the insurance options, contacting uh, Golden State RMA and others. Is that friendly? Yeah. And I and I seconded it. Who made the motion? Uh, George did. George did. Okay. Call for, uh, public comment. Will you're just too quiet out there. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next item is, we'll just go over real briefly, continue the discussion of strategies to raise revenue to fund IVCSD operations as outlined in the document, strategies for revenue for ISD. Do we know if we made m many contacts other than great contact with UCSB to be able to? So, and I think, I don't know if that letter has been sent. Do you know if the letter's been sent to? Uh, the letter to, to the uh, chancellor? Uh, I'm not aware of it, no. Okay. So that we need to keep moving on that. Because okay. I actually spoke with the chancellor last week. Um, so then the next move is Jonathan in the audience was going to set up a meeting with the Fund for Santa Barbara. Hey, and that's I've sent three emails and have not gotten any replies. Interesting. I think I might just call the person. Yeah. So that one's pending, and then I'm I've um, I, I'm gonna catch up with the Santa Barbara Foundation. Okay. To see where right cool. where they're at. Okay. Um, and I, the other thing I was gonna do was to go talk to John Clark, who's the head of the Bauer Foundation. They don't give to something like this, but John's an alum, and maybe I'll, he knows the whole world of philanthropy in Santa Barbara in terms of foundations. Okay. Going after foundations. So cool. 
All right, we just got to get some pledges yeah. together so that we have, I think, some support for whomever is going to propose a budget that needs to be done fairly soon. That's right. I think the top priority is to move the UCSB yeah. Oh, yeah. thing along, Huge, right. and um, and it it has the most moving parts. Right. So. Thank you for your gift, by the way. You're welcome. That really yes, kind of very much. Oh, right, my upped, check. It kind of upped the pressure on me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to find out if my pledge to the Iowa Vista Youth Project is up yet, or if I've paid it off. <laughs> <laughs> got it. But I, I should. And I think I we still have a pledge from IB. Um, Plus, we have the three thousand from the county. <laughs> Which is oh yeah that's right no strings oh yeah so you know we probably should have a collection <laughs> we should form a collection agency <laughs> really <laughs> so pledges we got mm -hmm. five hundred and three thousand and, and um actually actually I had a. Um, I have, a, uh, I have somebody who was at a dinner last night who wants to give money. Cool. Hi, this is George. So, anyways, I wonder if we should, in part of our strategies, is how we want to track our pledges mm -hmm. and make sure we collect it and get it in the bank. Do we want to assign one of us to do that and then forward the document to the full board? I think we probably want to make sure that maybe we could, as part of this agenda item, track our pledges as part of the agenda. Should we do that? Like a standing item, is that what you're saying? Yes. So part of it is the condition to con continue discussion of strategies to raise revenue to find it, uh, blah, 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 contact and secure donations for the district. Okay. So should we... Should we so that's just a spreadsheet that we continue to add to. So yeah, we could either have a spreadsheet or we yeah. could we could put a running total or say pledges outstanding yeah. or something we'll we'll start to track. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just do it as part of this. Okay, that sounds okay. great. So maybe we just make a motion to um, as part of the contact and secure donations for the district, keep a running list of pledges and receipts. Keep a running list of pledges and receipts. We'll probably have two kinds, government contributions and uh, donations, so. Mm -hmm. It's just like kind of how do you manage your accounts receivable and make it happen, you know, especially mm -hmm. if people want to start to give. Yeah, um, and I'll second that. So the motion is just to keep a running list of pledges and receipts. Yeah. I'll second it. Here, I'm going to, how about I meant to say motion for the formation committee. George here? Yeah, I think that's fine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. George absent. Okay. I think we can just, um, I don't know if there's any discussion. Discussion on item eight, continue to dis discuss design and approve a format for a document to guide the work of the Formation Commission. Um, you know, there was some talk about, from George, about, you know, redefining or trying to better define what the Formation Committee should do. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or if we're getting confusion between us and policy. The one thing that came up with me the other day is it seemed like Jay Freeman thought formation was doing the budget and then I think we decided to have a finance committee right 
Yeah, what I think needs to happen is I think that we need to have a discussion about the whole budget thing at the full board level so that we can all kind of hash out what the rules are going to be for that. I went and read them this morning, and uh, I think the vote requirements look like to me it's just majority vote, you know, whatever majority is, except for there's one item where it's a four-fifths vote when you're going to move money out of contingency. So. It uh, seems yeah, like right. I think I read it, too. it seems like you don't have to follow the county budget act, but it would be nice to know that rule you were going to send me of what constitutes a quorum. You know, I didn't. Oh understand. yeah, oh. yeah. Because That's I, right, and I forgot. To do I that, know so. at another county agency who has a big board like thirteen, they have a hard time getting a majority vote for their budget sometimes. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry about that. That's okay. I was hoping it was a donor. Oh, it was a donor? Oh, no, you assumed it was a donor. I was hoping it was. <laughs> All right, we're just on that. Just continue to discuss the design and the approved okay. format for a document to guide the work of the CSD. How's that going? Is so, are done you, by is, before is, the end of the quarter? Is this in reference to the, this is reference to the, um, the code, right? Yeah. Well, this is yeah, your, so your, no. your spreadsheet. My Oh yes, no. This is the th yeah. This is the thing that so Will's been working on. So he finished the assignment last week, and I cool. forgot to make copies of it. Um, but I'll be happy to. The same. Yeah. Turned it in. I lost it. Yeah. It's on my desk somewhere. Didn't have I mean, time I, to I'd be I'd be happy to. Uh, I'll, I'll send it out on the agenda. So for for maybe this just a question for Will. Did did stuff c come up on there that as you were going through that code section saying, oh, these guys should be working on this sooner than later. So Did the, anything really pop out at the you? The only two things were general manager, because no, like a lot of the code references a general manager. Um, yeah. So having one would help you comply with more things. Cool. Um, the other one was the budget, just because it has a standing deadline. Okay, good. So. Good, so mm -hmm. we got one on the issue I, and so you're going to take a budget item back to the board on june 6th yeah i think we need to have a further discussion about that and the process of course because there's a deadline for the 30th so limited amount of time to get that and have we and who's tasked with the format of the budget since it's a little technical document or is that did we oh, put that in the finance format? committee um, I need to go back and look. Okay, I know, I know we form a finance committee. I think we recommended that we form a finance yeah, committee, and yeah. and that we also recommended that the um, policy committee consider the policies, which yeah. is the voting yeah. thing. Yeah. And I think that's pretty simple. You can go read the code and figure that out. <laughs> Even though it never explicitly says majority vote, how many? You know, it it's inferred. <clears throat> the only thing is, you know, in terms of the format of the budget, that that there is a specific format that's mm -hmm. for special districts, and it, it's pretty simple, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it hasn't been updated since like 1977. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it's, it's basically a four-column approach. What's your this year's actual? What's your last year's budget? What's yeah. your next year's budget? What's the difference? And a lot so, of ours. Are just yeah, that's easy. Yeah. And then it's got to be all done. It does say in the code that it has to be done in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and I think that statute, which is which is the budgetary statutes that are out there. So. I don't know if I could help before I leave about what that format would look like or who I should. Yeah, get. anything that you want to bring, whether it's to the full board or here, okay, would be appreciated. Okay, I'll, I'll it's better. I think better sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, so you'll bring that th this item back to the board before Will leaves. Or yes. Yeah. When when's your last day, Will? Um, I haven't nailed it down, but probably the end of the quarter. June seventeen, eighteen. Are you right. walking? Are you walking? This I am walking. Which ceremony are you going to be in? Political science, uh, Saturday at 9 a.m. I'll be there. This guy's drunks. Oh my god, that Saturday at 9 a.m. 
people. Yeah, I know. It's the worst one. After yeah. Friday night? <laughs> yes. Yes. They don't go to bed. They don't go to bed. Hen Henry gets intoxicated just getting their breath. <laughs> it's good. I'll look for you. All right. Let's go on to item nine. Discuss the formation committee directors availability for scheduled regular meeting dates of every second and fourth Monday at 10 mm -hmm. at 970 Barcadero in this meeting room. So the meet, scheduled meetings would be June 12th. Me having to get an agenda to Spencer by the 8th. And the second meeting would be June 26th. Me having to get an agenda to Spencer by the 22nd. So, you know, June 12th is finals week. It's end of the quarter. Um, but it would be the last time that we'd be able to look at um, uh, Will's work, um, but <clears throat> that won't change Will's work. So I, I don't know if you guys want to have the meeting on June twelfth, or if we want to cancel that. Um, well, you know, before I should say anything, I should check and make sure I don't have a final during this time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, have the other dates? Well, Do you have the other dates, like in July and August, sketched uh, out? I didn't. Just count out the second and fourth. It's the okay. second and fourth, but I'm getting right. No, no, that's okay. okay. I have to go in there and put it on, on my calendar. I have a final that starts at noon on Monday. Not a problem. Not just, a problem at all. So if I'm not going to be, if I'm not gonna be here and you're going to have a final, I'd say we okay. shouldn't. Don't give him any yeah, give him breaks. I mean, I think it's fine. I, I think there's probably going to be a lot to talk about. I just don't know. The main thing for me is how are you going to get the agenda? Right. I'd have to do the agenda almost before I leave. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll move that we cancel this June 12th meeting just so there's no, just so the one guy who doesn't have a conflict here okay. makes the most. You have a lot of stuff to do. June 12th? Yeah. I have to go walk there, supervise, I give out scholarships. I have to do five graduations, each one two to two and a half hours. All of them, drunk, the except screen. for the engineering. The engineers, they don't come drunk. They've already, <laughs> they've already got jobs. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, June 12th, oh, I'll, I'll move that we, uh, what's the official language? Uh, canceled the canceled. regular meeting of June 12th. I'll second. Okay. And then how does that get noticed? Um, I print out a cancellation, an oh, agenda that just says this meeting okay. is canceled. Yeah. All right. And then everybody's good for the meeting. Of, uh, I'll be back to do the agenda by June 22nd, so I have plenty of time to get back and I'm get, sure get I'm up to speed. June 26th. I'm pretty sure I am. I do have to look at my July. Just That's a good point. The second meeting in July, I'm going to be in Seattle, so. But we'll worry about that soon. Yeah. Second and so it's the 11th and the 25th in July? Yeah. And, and what did we, what did we decide on July 4th for the full board? Did, did we cancel that meeting or move it? Uh, I don't think we've done anything at the board level yet. Is it, It's first and third Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's correct. So, so that would, I mean, we would okay. most likely cancel that one. So I anticipate that for this committee, there will probably be a special meeting scheduled. Well, first, and we're going to talk about this in a second. First off, in the next week or so, to talk about GM stuff. Yeah. Um, but also then sometime in the first or maybe second week of June, if that's, if that's possible. How, when are, you, when are you getting back, Bob? I'm going from the first to the 16th. Okay. So. So I think we should have a special meeting for the GM um, okay. 
I, I can do it like Thursday the 20th. But what's convenient for you guys? 26, I'm blocked Friday. Yeah, that's fine. Are I mean, I, th June? I, I think. What? No, June? no, we're talking about May. We're talking about immediately. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe if we could have a meeting this Thursday for the GM. This Is Thursday that enough time for Thursday you to get it done? Work? Yeah, definitely. This Thursday the 25th? Yes. And so we'll have. Do uh, you want me to do the agenda? Yes. Okay. And the agenda items are going to be the the uh, district general manager mm -hmm. uh, update on insurance. The earlier the better for that meeting. 10 a.m. Uh, do you think it's going to go longer than an hour? I don't think so. It's. I think we should be able to be do two it. items. So. Yeah, unless we, we spent review. thirty minutes talking. So we want about to review Will's spreadsheet at that before he leaves. Um, before he leaves, well, yeah. he'll he'll still be around after June twelfth because we're canceling June twelfth. Oh, I mean, yeah, sure, we can review. Yeah, sure. I'll put the, put it on three items. Well. Yeah, just so we receive and accept. Yeah, no, I agree. Give yeah. him his award. You know? I just need. I need to leave a little early. We got a. Uh, interfaith lunch over at Mosher. Okay. Okay. So we're all done anyways. Uh, Not today. Uh, but yeah. Well, day. here. Well, let's day. let's oh. get a couple things out of the way. So I move that we cancel the meeting um, scheduled for the twelfth of June. I already moved that. Oh, you did. Yeah. I got all right now. Public comment. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I move. Yeah. That's a yell at me too. <laughs> I mean, it's all the same, right? I move that we schedule a special meeting on Thursday, the twenty fifth, at ten a.m. in this room. Is that enough notice? Seventy two hours. Uh, we need twenty four for special. Okay. Okay, I'll have to do that when I get home. Uh, let me read it back. I move that we schedule a meeting on May 25th at 10 a.m. in the community room. Special meeting? Yeah, special special meeting of the formation committee. No public comments. Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Who seconded that? Uh, I think I did. Did you make the motion or did, uh, who made the motion? I did. Oh, yeah. then he seconded it. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Is that it? Yeah. So then the next one is suggestions of agenda for the next formation committee meeting. I um, think we kind of just went through that. Yeah. Okay. So nothing, anything come back to this committee? Do we need to, we don't have enough time to do anything on budget because the 26 will be there. So we probably need to get a quick finance committee together at the next regular board meeting to get the, the budget on the agenda. Okay. Maybe one of the things to do is to schedule it before or after the regular board meeting. Well, that's a good idea. Just so schedule what, a committee meeting? Finance committee meeting. Or you could, you could simply take that that you know the budget right into the full board and contemplate it right during the meeting I mean I think it's gonna I mean it's um, gonna be simple because it's gonna be you know fifty thousand dollars and or well yeah. 250 it depends on how we record that donation from the university I whether it's a contribution to us or if it's just going to get the administrative part and its direct services Paid for out of UCSB. I'm yeah, you know, actually, that's a good point because it may not flow. Well, that first thirty may flow in here; the rest of it may not. So, therefore, mm -hmm. you wouldn't put it in your. That's budget. right. That's right. That was the impression that I was under. Well, then the, the the question gets to be there for, for the purposes of a like a grant to us, even though the money might not flow in here, and it's 
money held by another government agency on our behalf, maybe we do record those transactions as part of our operations. I don't know. That would be worthy of discussion. Yeah, we need to do some more research on that. Yeah. Yeah, from a from a transparency point of view, or from a our own internal monitoring, I would say yes. But from a, I mean, it seems to me it gets messy because there's going to be other government agencies that are going to do things on our behalf, and we're not going to want to put all of that in. I mean, if Goleta West, if the IV Parks and Recreation District decides to, you know, help mm -hmm. us with furniture right. or. It's, it's kind of like, you know, you get to the universities thing, though, but it was like this kind of a pledge of a contribution to this agency, and you wonder if in that type of transit, and then yeah. we're getting this administrative yeah. fee off of it, it becomes more like a, a more of a yeah. financial transaction. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have to think and do a little, we can do a little research but I'm on just, that. I mean, for example, the, the money for the interns, if there's money coming for the summer and fall interns, none of that money will come through right. the district. Mm -hmm. right. right. Do you want to put that in your budget? I don't think so. I don't know. That's a good yeah. question. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you would. I don't think in that particular case, I probably would say no. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the grant case we might want to say yes because that would be a kind of a direct services to, yeah. just footnote it yeah okay. just, just do a footnote yeah we're, right. we're going to fix this we're going to do a footnote to the financials <laughs> all right so so any other agenda items for when we get out to the 26 we can no I, I i think that what we have it limited to because i think the big the bulk of it is going to be the gm the what? The GM. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. We're going to talk right. about the internship program and then adjourn. Okay. Oh, you guys are going to do that. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you then Thursday here. Right? So you, yes, that's Thursday right. Thursday at 10. 10. Right. Awesome. Good. See you soon. Thank you. So then the last one is just consider a work plan to expand the district intern program. Return to the board of directors to discuss the work plan in order to be prepared for the summer quarter. I think the board actions included to pursue request for funding by president, decision to request um, three internships for the summer quarter, contact the political science department to initiate the recruitment. Anything else that the formation committee needs to do, do you think, to push that forward? Um, I actually, I don't really think so, given that at the last yeah. board meeting, the discussion was largely we basically came to the conclusion that there aren't going to be a ton of changes made for the summer program. Yeah, yeah. And so the direction that was made at the board level was for the president to inquire with the OSA IV regarding uh, what the funding looks like and try yeah. to get some more information and then uh, authorize the board president to work with political science to initiate the recruitment process. Right. So that's something that Ethan should be working on. Okay. And then, it, then it's never too late, I think, to... The only reason I put this on here is to say, <laughs> it seemed like yesterday that will started and boom, they're going a quarter. You go, uh -huh. wow, that's uh -huh. 10 weeks really fast. Yeah. And so when you think of the summer, that 10 weeks is going to go, even though it's mm -hmm. a little longer than 10 weeks, right? It's two sessions. Yeah, you know, I'd have to count it out because I think it might be 12. Because yeah. I think there are two six weeks. But then within two, there's session A and session B. Right. And those are both six weeks. I think there's a week in between, or actually, I'm not even sure if that's true. It might, it could be as long as 14 weeks. Yeah. So it's going to be kind of interesting to say it's never too early to start now talking about fall. Mm -hmm. That's because right. It'll come around really fast. And Natalie was kind of saying, oh, you can request your fall funding early. So wasn't sure. Yeah, and that's something that I think we're, we're going to want to continue to go back to UCSB and AS for money. Yeah, don't we have an ad hoc committee? For There's an ad hoc committee. It's the spring internship ad hoc committee that oh. just goes, they kind of coordinates assignments and right. just like information shares. All right. Well, it's never too so, late, I think, to get 
you know, before Will leaves to get any ideas he might have by reviewing the code about future assignments for interns. I mean, if you think of anything, you know, that you look at a particular section of the law or something to say, you know, one of the things we discussed about future assignments for interns was, okay, we're going to look at each specific service we're allowed to offer and expand that. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I was really, it was almost like insider baseball when we stuck started talking about tenant mm -hmm. mediation yeah because I haven't ever I didn't know who any of the three organizations were yeah. I was totally lost of why the city of Santa Barbara was involved and then I finally go oh well the city of Santa Barbara doesn't want to take on a hard job <laughs> yeah because tenant mediation and IV was just like oh well, I see that's gonna be really hard yeah so but I didn't see much of a staff report or something that kind of help me think through the process of yeah. what were we trying to accomplish. Yeah, well, and the great part about I can't, like the direction that you're going is that a lot of this legwork has already been done to some extent during the AB3 process. Yeah, right. And so through all of those notes that we still have about what the community wanted to see and what was feasible, um, because we had, I remember, uh, tenant mediation people come in and present right, to us. Right, right. Uh, and... I don't know if we had people from UCSB housing office, but right. So it was like in. I'm going. What? What? This is just too short for me to, you know, have any input on. So yeah, that that would be good projects for interns. Um, Definitely. Anyways, that's I all agree. I had is how to continue that, how to design projects. Definitely. Yeah. Let's continue to think about that. Yeah. Hi, Diana. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, would it be okay at start to know if I push a couple of uh, cables through to the storage? Oh, of course, yeah. Well, I think we're, we're, we're about to adjourn, yeah. 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 Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great.